Perfect. Okay. So, like I said, I'm Judy from OK Cycle and Adventure Tours. Um, welcome. Um, the first speaker we have is Hillary, and she is from uh, Korean Tourism. She's actually recorded her presentation because she can't be here in person, but it's a great presentation. I've watched it. Um, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat or you can send me an email later. If I don't get a chance to answer them, if I can't answer them, I will answer them either by sending you an email or sending something general out if more than one person has the same question. So, uh, OK Cycle Adventure Tours is a fully licensed TECO travel agency, which means we're licensed in Ontario to sell tours. Uh, we specialize in active vacations. We do bike tours where you use your bicycle to do your trip of various types. We do boat bike tours where your hotel room comes with you and you float along. We do hiking and trekking tours. And we also do adventure tours. Um, and that brings us to tonight's first speaker, which I said is Hillary. She's from Korean Tourism. This is a recorded presentation, but it gives you a good overview about Korea. Um, and if you can't hear it, let me know, but it should be fine. We just tested it. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, thank you so much for joining this awesome webinar. I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit of South Korea. So uh, my name is Hillary, and I am the marketing manager here at Korea Tourism Organization. Um, so to start us off, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the highlights of South Korea, what there is to see, and of course, why you should visit. So South Korea is a country visited by millions of travelers every single year. Um, a few of the great spots to visit are Seoul, as you can see, located. towards the northern part of South Korea, as well as uh, Busan. And one of the best ways to uh, explore, of course, is by bicycle. So um, if you are looking for more information about, um, you know, how to do that, then you're in the right spot. So uh, one of the great and very exciting things about um visiting Korea this year is that uh, it's very easy to enter. So for Canadian and U.S. passport holders, um, you do not need a visa and you also do not need an ETA, which is an electronic travel authorization, um, also known as the KETA. This is basically a substitute for a visa, but um, the government has actually declared that up until the end of 2024, there is an exemption. So you can very easily book your flight um, and be on your way, um, which is really exciting. Um, there are direct flights in Canada from Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and Calgary. It's actually new service from Montreal and Calgary this year. Um, and you can fly with Air Canada, Korean Air, and WestJet. So very exciting stuff. Now, as I mentioned, some of the great places to visit in Korea include Seoul, which is the capital. It is uh, the largest city in South Korea, um, and it's a beautiful place with very lovely neighborhoods um, and a lot to see. Um, there's some really beautiful Korean architecture mixed with the more modern um, sprawling skyscrapers that give it um, something that's very, very unique. And of course, um, a huge attraction for uh, travelers. There's places like the Five Palaces, which have so much culture and history, but then, you know, sprawling um, shopping districts and food markets. So a lot of great uh, stuff to see uh, if you are visiting. Um, next, we have Busan, which is the second largest city in South Korea. It is uh, on the coast. So um, it's got beautiful views of the ocean, beautiful beaches, and uh, tons of sea. You can keep it take a cable car all along the coast um, to get a great view of the ocean and the city. And it's got great food as well. And uh, another really popular location uh, that both locals and tourists um, alike uh, love to visit is Jeju Island or Jeju-do. It's the largest island uh, in Korea, located uh, towards the south part of the country. So it's got beautiful scenic views. Um, so of course, if you're in love with the great outdoors, Jeju is a wonderful place to visit. 
Uh, another great thing about Korea is that there's four distinct seasons, similar to Canada, of course. So no matter what time you go, there's different changing scenery all the time. Now, we always recommend spring and autumn as two of the best seasons to visit. Now, spring and autumn are both um, slightly more moderate in temperature, but um, the great thing about these two seasons is in the spring, you have the beautiful cherry blossoms, which is um, iconic uh, to South Korea. And then in the fall, you have the changing fall foliage. So, of course, this is especially beautiful if you are planning to um, cycle throughout the country. Those two seasons have some really beautiful scenery. Now, Korea is also a country that's um, got a lot of uh, really, really um, great things that tourists love. So, of course, the culture is um, so unique and wonderful, and there's a lot of different ways to uh, experience that. Um, there's a lot of rich history as well. Um, as I mentioned, um, places like the Five Palaces, there's also... Uh, various UNESCO World Heritage Sites and temples to see across the country. Um, it's also a great place for foodies. So if you love food, um, you know, Korea has so many great restaurants, food markets, um, and different uh, types of cuisine to explore. Uh, whether you're a fan of Korean barbecue or pulgogi, um, if you love kimchi, then of course you have to try that in Korea. Uh, there's also really beautiful scenery all throughout the country, especially if you're traveling by bike, you'll see so much, um, you know, Korea has, uh, as I said, uh, four different seasons as well. So, you know, throughout the year, the scenery is always changing, which is so um, great. Um, there's also this really unique blend of tradition and modernity, as I mentioned Um earlier. So, you know, places like Seoul especially have that where you've got the beautiful traditional Korean architecture um, and it's surrounded by the more modern, uh, you know, cityscape, uh, which again is so unique to the country. And of course, four different seasons, um, which makes it great in any uh, time that you travel. Um, and also, Korea is a great place for a stopover. Um, so if you're thinking about visiting other um, destinations in Asia as well. It's a great uh, hub as it's centrally located and there's many direct flights to other places all throughout Asia. The Incheon Airport also runs a great stopover program which actually has free transit tours so that's really really wonderful for travelers who are thinking about staying um, maybe for a night or even for just you know a few hours. Um, and of course I can't not talk about the Korean entertainment. So you know K-pop, K-dramas have really put Korea on the map um, for so many people. Um, so of course if you are a K-pop or K-drama lover, Korea is a great place to visit um, and get uh, get to know it firsthand. And lastly, it's really easy to get around. Transportation is um, really, really great. Um, the subways are super, super reliable. There's a high-speed bullet train called the KTX that runs all throughout the country. Um, and there's also English signage in subways as well, which makes it super, super easy for travelers to get around, which is super important, of course, when you are visiting. Now, um, of course, as I mentioned, Korea has some great, uh, you know, landscapes and scenery. So um, if you are exploring the great outdoors, hiking is a really popular activity for locals and, of course, for tourists. Um, if you didn't know, Korea is about 70% mountains. So that means, you know, um, there's great hikes no matter where you are. Some of the great places that uh, you might want to visit, just a few of them, are uh, Otaesan Mountain and Taebaksan Mountain in Gangwon-do province. Gangwon-do is towards the northeast part of the country. Um, but if you're, you know, thinking about staying closer to Seoul, then Pukhansan Mountain is a great place to go. So this national park uh, is in the north part of Seoul. Um, really, really beautiful views of the city and of course very easy to get to because it's you know located in the capital um but if you're going down to Jeju then you should probably check out Halasan so Halasan is the tallest mountain in Korea and um there's a beautiful volcanic crater lake uh, at the top it's um good for day hikes and if you're into something a little more um uh, challenging and of course uh, if you're interested in longer hikes then Halasan is a great place to go um, in any time of the year. It's actually known for uh, people who like to hike in the winter as well if you're so inclined. Um, now last but certainly not least um, 
I want to talk about the cycling paths, of course. So, of course, that's all uh, why you're here. Um, so, Korea has incredibly robust um, cycling infrastructure, which uh, is great for locals and tourists alike. Um, it's very safe. There's completely separated uh, lanes for cyclists, which makes it really, really wonderful. Um, uh, it's a wonderful way to explore the country. So, uh, one of the most popular routes is to actually cycle all the way across. Now, of course, this is for more avid cyclists. Um, in terms of difficulty, it's moderate in terms of the elevation, um, but it does take around two weeks, 12 to 15 days, depending, of course, on how long we stop, around 630 kilometers in total so you are cycling from one um, point uh of the country all the way to the other going all the way from seoul uh down to pusan um which are both beautiful cities and you get to see a lot of wonderful scenery um temples and different stops along the way so this is a really really robust uh, cycling path um and it's you know absolutely great uh, another cycling route that's really popular is the east coast route so this goes um as you can imagine, all along the east coast of South Korea, um, a relatively similar type of distance. So it's um, going to take you again about two weeks, 10 to 14 days, um, around 720 kilometers, starting in Sokcho, which is up in Gangwon-do province, all the way down to Busan again. So you're ending in the same place. But this is a good route if you want to see the ocean. Of course, it goes all the way along the coast. Um, and another popular route is the Jeju bike path, which goes all the way around Jeju Island. As I mentioned, Jeju is the largest island in Korea. Um, this is a little bit um, of a shorter route in comparison to the other two. So it's a little bit easier. It takes about four to five days and is around 244 kilometers um, long. Um, of course, Jeju is a great place to do some outdoor activity because it is so scenic. Um, and this is uh, a really, really great um, you know, path that you can take. So, you know, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll pass it back to uh, Judy now. Okay, so uh, Hitler gave us a basic overview. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about um, the tour we're offering, and I'm going to show you some highlights of um, what I saw when I was in Korea. Um, like I said, I'm the office manager and I'm also a travel agent. And I spent 12 days in Korea in October of last year, primarily to go cycling, but I spent a bit of time at the beginning and the end as well. Um, so no matter where you come from, the odds are very good that you're gonna start in Seoul because that's where you're gonna fly into. The airport is about 30 kilometers out of town, but the transit in from the airport to the city is really good, really efficient. Absolutely not a problem. You just get on a train in the you get on a train in the airport and it takes you into town. You can also use a taxi or an Uber, but really the train works well. And you can actually ride your bike. Um, there is a bike path that goes from the airport into Seoul. So I'm gonna start by showing you just some of the highlights of what I saw in Seoul because if you do come to go cycling, you're still gonna want to spend some time in Seoul. And this is just kind of a brief overview. So
Wow. Um, the last slide is while I was there, I snuck in a trail race. And the, and the mountain pictures and the trail race, that's right in the middle of downtown Seoul. Um, did someone have a question a minute ago? Okay, I'll keep going. So now I'm going to give you kind of an overview of cycling in uh, South Korea. This is not specifically about the trip, but kind of about why you want to cycle in South Korea. So it's like a, South Korea has thousands of bike paths. Um, and the infrastructure is amazing. It's dedicated cycling infrastructure. So here at the bottom picture, that's actually an old railway bridge. I'm sorry, an old railway tunnel. And they've turned it into a bicycle tunnel. And on the picture above, you see bridges that are dedicated for bicycles. So they the infrastructure is built so that the bikes are totally separated from the road. There are times when you're on quiet country roads, but even then, uh, we were riding along a road and there was like no traffic and a car came up behind us and it was, you know, well back and we're waving the car by and the car didn't want to go by because they wanted to let us keep riding and they wouldn't, they refused to pass us. So most of the time you're completely separated from traffic and even when there is traffic, they're super respectful of bikes. It's probably the best cycling infrastructure I've ever seen. Um, the scenery, it was absolutely beautiful. Now, I was there in September. Um, so the rice fields had all turned like a really nice golden color because they were just starting to change. And the rice fields in the golden color with the mountains in the background was stunning. Um, Korea is very mountainous, but uh, the four rigger bike, bike path is basically flat because it covered, it follows the river all the way. Um, the food, the food was amazing. Um, and the other thing that I wasn't expecting from South Korea was really, really good coffee. They take their coffee very seriously. Um, and when you're jet lagged, a cappuccino in the afternoon is super useful. And I think I had the best cappuccino I've ever had in my life in Korea. Um, the coastline is beautiful as well. When we went on the trip, we did some of the Four River Bike Path, which is the tour we're primarily offering, but we did also do some of the coastal route. The coastal route's really beautiful. Uh, beaches, um, kind of rocky beaches, um, just really nice scenery. The uh, path was a little better on the Four Rivers route. So although it's dedicated bike path on the coast route, you spend more time kind of going back and forth than you do. Like you have to change routes more, but it's still absolutely stunning. We did not cycle in the island area that was referred to in the previous video. Um, they also have a passport system, similar to if you're familiar with the Camino passports. Um, along the bike paths in Korea, they have these red telephone booths. I don't know why these red telephone booths. And you get a passport and you stamp it as you go along. And at the end, when you present all of your stamps, you can send it to the Korean government. And they give you a certificate showing that you've gone from Seoul to Busan. There's also mountains. We did see some cycling in the mountains. It was beautiful. The roads were in incredible shape. Um, the tour from Seoul to Busan does not include serious mountain cycling. Um, I did the tour from Seoul to Busan on a hybrid and I never felt the need for anything bigger or, or faster, but riding in the mountains, I would have wanted a road bike. So if you want to do that kind of cycling, it is available in Korea as well. And like I said, we got lucky that the leaves had just started to change. It was a beautiful time of year. Um, so the tour that we're featuring is an 11 day, 10 night tour, uh, group guided um, from Seoul to Busan. It's 600 kilometers. You actually start in Seoul, not an in Incheon airport, um, but you can easily cycle the other 20 kilometers from the airport to make it the whole trip. Um, the first day you start in Seoul and you uh, have a group dinner, meet the guides. The second day you, still, you cycle. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the names of the cities because I will completely botch them. But the second day is 75 kilometers of cycling. You cycle out of Seoul, all on bike paths. Um, and uh, you end up along the river. This was taken the afternoon of the second day. So all totally bike path you can see the designated bike path there there's no cars nothing it's a completely separate route um 
Day three, you're continuing along the bike path, beautiful views. Day, it's 65 kilometers of riding. Day four, there's 73 kilometers and it's the tough day. There's definitely some hills in that day. Um, this picture was taken from the top of the hill. We didn't actually climb up that gully in the middle, but this, this is the one day where you're gonna have to do some climbing. And there's two hills this day. So day five is a rest day, you get the day off to make up for the fact that you just had to ride up two hills. Um, you have a rest day in Meng Yong City, as I attempt to say it. Um, one of the things they had in Meng Yong City is they have an open set where they shoot all kinds of movies. And so they have everything from ancient villages to modern scenes, and it's a very popular tourist spot. It's also connected to a park. So you have a day to spend there. On day six, uh, you're back on the bike path and it's gently downhill. And again, along the river. Basically the path that goes from Seoul to Busan is four connected river bike paths. And day six is 60 kilometers of riding. On day seven, you have another 60 kilometers of riding. And here you've changed rivers, but you're still riding along the river. And here you can see that they've actually built, basically it was kind of a bridge, but it was sort of a, a bridge that ran along the side of the water, but it was built like specifically for riding a bike on. And the views were fantastic. Uh, day eight, you're doing 74 kilometers. And again, you're still along the bike paths. Day nine, you're doing 55 kilometers. There's a lot of country here. We saw farmers harvesting uh, rice. We saw people picking crops. We saw farm animals, lots and lots of rice. Um, definitely the primary crop that you see on this trip, but it was a very rural area. So it's kind of nice to see the, the rural sites. Uh, day 10 is the hardest day. It's 97 kilometers, but it's flat and you're going into Busan city. You don't actually cycle the very last piece into Busan city, but you're going into Busan. Um, and then you spend the night in Busan and day 11, you're gonna make arrangements to go back to Seoul. Uh, it took you 10 days to cycle there, but you can get on a bullet train and it'll take about four hours to get back. And the bullet train's under $100. Um, so day 12, uh, Here's a few pictures of what I saw in Busan. I was only in Busan for probably less than 24 hours. Okay, and so for the tour we're offering, these costs are based on a smaller group. So the cost is based by how many people are in the group. We do not currently have a date for a group tour, but if you're interested in doing the tour and you have a smaller group, let me know and we'll try and set up like a fall date or a spring 2025 date. You definitely wanna do spring or fall. I think it's just the best time to go. Um, so the prices are in US dollars. So if there's only two or three of you, it's gonna cost you 5,800 each. Uh, if you got four to five, then it's gonna be 4,200. Six to seven, it's 3,240. Um, and eight to 15, it would be 3,120. 
Now that includes effectively all of your meals. I believe there may be one, a couple of lunches that you're paying for, but basically all of your meals are covered. It includes all of your accommodation. The accommodations in Seoul and Busan are pretty modern. Once you get in the country, you'll be in less, more traditional places. They won't be as fancy, but you're always going to have your own bathroom because um, some of them are more genuine Korean accommodation. It includes a hybrid bike. You can upgrade that and rent an e-bike instead if you would prefer. Um, and it includes basically snacks, all the entrance, fee, entrance fees, your bike passport, and an English-speaking guide and driver who will move your stuff. They will sag in an emergency, but they're not really planning on sagging everybody. So the idea is if you're planning to do this trip, you should plan. They'll sag you in an emergency, but if you plan to do this ride, you should plan that you're actually going to do the whole ride. And if it's too much, you should probably do, do it on an e-bike. Uh, international and domestic flights aren't included. Airport pickup and drop-offs aren't included. And extra personal snacks, coffee, tea, uh, drinks, et cetera, are not included. Um, that's my basic spiel. I see I got a couple questions in the chat and I can also, um, I'm going to answer those first and then we can try just, if you want to ask a question, take yourself off mute. Um, so the first question is on these tours, are the bikes provided or do you take your own like an e-bike? So the bike is provided and my recommendation is that you, even if you, well, first of all, I'm not sure how easy it is to fly with an e-bike. Um, and even if that's an option, my recommendation would be to rent a bike. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that if you're going to go all the way to South Korea, you're going to want to do some other stuff while you're there. And you don't want to have to babysit your bicycle for the rest of the tour. So if you want to go visit Busan, you have a bike you need to take with you. The other complication about bringing your own bike is if you end up in Busan, you cannot take your bike back on the bullet train. Now, I'm sure we can find a way to get your bike back, but you can't put anything but a folding bike on a bullet train. So we'd have to arrange transport to get your bike back to Seoul. Um, do walkers use pass? Do, do walkers use the bike pass as well? Yes, to some extent they do. Some of them, the bike path actually in Seoul, the bike path is actually segregated and there's a walking section. Um, as you get further out, there are places where people are walking on the paths with you, but generally speaking, in the busier areas, they're 100% bike and there's a separated, segregated walking slash jogging path as well. Um, this question here. You need to bring your own bike tools, pumps, patches, etc. Not really because uh, you're using their bikes, so you don't know what kind of tools you're going to need. Um, and you're going to have a guide with you and there'll be a van. So they will have like the bike tools and the other things that are required for basic repairs on the bikes. The bike that I had was in great shape. I had no issues with the bike at all. It had been well looked after. It was well maintained and there were no problems with it. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions? Comments. So at this point, Judy, oh. can I ask how the gearing is on the bikes? <laughs> um, I was riding a hybrid, and I can find out what the specific gearing was, but it was more or less like the hybrid I have here. And most of the riding, other than the one day with the hills, is basically flat. Right. It was the hills I was wondering. If is like are these three rings or uh it would be no, it wasn't a triple. It was a double, so it was a compact. Okay. Um if you want specific a specific answer to that, send me an email and I'll find out exactly what it is. But off the top of my head, I don't remember what it was. It was a compact and it was a hybrid, so it would have been relatively geared, uh low geared, high geared, geared for uh making it easier to ride. Okay. Is English spoken there? So in the big cities, you'll have no issues with finding someone who speaks English. And like most of Asia, the tourism language is English. So anyone who's in the tourism English, ugh, tourism 
business is going to be able to speak English, at least to a fairly basic extent, so you won't have a problem. If you get further out in the country, you may run into people who do not speak English. Um, they will have Google Translate, which is an absolute uh, lifesaver in Asia. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in Asia and we've always been able to communicate. The other thing that's nice is all the street signs and actually all the signs are in Korean and English. So you'll always be able to read the signs. And how, how are the prices there in terms of um, compared to Canada, compared to Canada, like for food? Um, so it's cheaper than it is here, but it's not super cheap. So I would say off the top of my head that it's probably like between maybe like 60% of what you'd pay here for a restaurant meal is what you paid there for a restaurant meal. Okay. I mean, obviously you can spend a lot of money if you want to, um, but I didn't spend very much money on meals. There is tons in Seoul and Busan, there's some amazing street food. Um, if you're, and, and I've never had a problem eating street food and I never had a problem in Seoul. Seoul is a very modern Asian city and so is Busan. Um, so I had no real concerns about eating street food and it was fun. It was an adventure. And do you have to drink bottled water along the way? No, you can drink the tap water. Any other questions? So at this point, you're gathering interest in the trip. Uh, so you haven't got any set dates. Is that? Well, so that... we can, if you want to do the trip, like, and you just have a few people and you want to pay, you know, I mean, we could set, if you tell me that two of you want to do this and you just want to do it on your own, you want to do it on October 2nd, we can probably make that happen. Um, but I'm also at the same time gathering interest in the idea of, you know, I'd like to go, but I want to be part of a bigger group and I want to go this fall or I want to go next spring and then we'll try to get a set date. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted a set date for this. I don't have one. We're working obviously with somebody on the ground in Korea because I spent 10 days there. I'm not an expert. Um, so we're dependent on the expertise. And, I, and you'll be going, the people guiding you are the same people that I went and I've seen and I've been with. Um, so we're working with them. If we have, you know, if 10 people say, hey, I want to go on a trip, we'll put it together as a group trip. But I need, if you tell me that you're interested, we will um, try and get a date for the fall or for next spring. The cherry blossoms are beautiful, I'm told. And if we decided we wanted to stay and, you know, add a different bicycle route or something like that, how is how easy is it to get accommodation? Like, do they have Airbnbs, that kind of thing, or? Uh, you can book hotels on booking.com. Okay. I don't know if Airbnb exists, um, but you could literally go online right now and book hotels on booking.com. Okay. Um, Judy, uh, can you get vegetarian meals on the tour? Are all the meals in a group, or are they separate, or? So... And, uh, Steve wanted on, to know if guides do cultural interpretation along the route or like the wild, what's the wildlife, well, you get to meet locals or, or what is it exactly there? Those two, three points, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> sorry. I wrote them <laughs> the problem. Chat too. The, no, no, the, the group, the meals are group meals and I don't eat red meat and I had no problem. Um, it would have been, there was a lot of seafood. Um, it will be more of a challenge if you don't eat seafood, um, but we can talk to them about that. They should be able to work around it because most of the group meals involved, and Korean meals in general involve like several small pieces. So there's like bowls of all kinds of different things that all go together. Um, so it would be more challenging as a complete vegetarian, but it was no problem for me not eating red meat. Um, okay, the second question was, I don't remember the second question, sorry. Uh, um, the, do the guides do cultural interpretation along the route or do, can they ID the wildlife, if, like the different types of birds that are there? 
or do you get to meet locals and talk to them along the way or at the destination or uh, things things along that line about meeting people and talking with them? So there was not a lot of cultural interpretation when I was there, um, but we certainly got a lot of information from the guides about living in Korea and what it was like. Um, the meals were all served. The meals along the route were in, you know, sort of local places. So we got to interact with the people in the restaurants. Um, we got to meet some cool people in coffee shops, but they didn't have any specific. Uh, we did go to one cultural village, but no, we did not go and, you know, go into the home of somebody who was Korean and visit with them and meet with them. Um, they were able to identify the wildlife and they told us about a lot of the crops. We did not see a lot of wildlife. Um, and that may just be that we didn't see a lot of wild animals. I think that part of Korea doesn't have a lot of wild animals. Um, we didn't see a lot. We saw bunnies and birds, but that was about it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? No, that's good. Okay, thank you for your time. Uh, it was, uh, thanks for taking time out of your day to hear what we have to say. And uh, if you have more questions, send me an email. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Korea really is a beautiful country. And even if you decide you wanna do something totally different than the tour we're offering, uh, drop us a line because it can probably, the operator that we're working with in Korea does a lot of other stuff. Uh, you could bike pack this route and uh, they can make you, they can help you do that too. So if you wanna cycle in Korea and you don't wanna do exactly what we're offering, it's probably still quite doable. Um, let us know what you want to do and how you want to do it. There is also a website that has quite a bit of information on the paths, and I will include that link when I send out the link to the webinar. Judy, will you keep us informed uh, if you do get more people interested and you're beginning to put a package together? Yep, I can do that. Send, like I said, send me an email and tell me that you're interested, and then I will kind of keep a, a line of um people that are specifically interested. Thank you. All right, have a, have a nice evening. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. I know. Thank you.